objectives of uh, today's lecture is to drive the stiffness matrix for beam element and the second objective is to perform beam analysis using direct stiffness method uh, we have uh, discussed direct stiffness me method in chapter 2 and 3 and now we will use that direct stiffness method in chapter 4 so first uh, you need to understand what is beam uh, write down this definition write down this definition for beam beam is a long slender structural member subjected to transverse loading that produces significant bending effects uh, you can see uh, this is a beam and uh, this is this x axis and this is y axis this is node 1 and node 2 there are two types of loading in the beam uh, first is the vertical load which produce vertical displacement Second type of load is the moment M2 represents moment and phi2 represents the uh, rotational displacement. Similarly, at node 1, M1 and F1 are the loads and V1, phi1 are the displacement. V1 is a vertical displacement and uh, phi1 is rotational displacement in this slide uh, uh, expression equation 4.1.13 is shown this is derived in the book this equation is derived in the book and on the left hand side this is force matrix in the middle it is uh, k matrix and on the right side it is displacement matrix for a single element so you need to memorize this expression which is f is equal to k x so um, you have also noted that similar equation was for you used for uh, bar element and spring element so for the chapter 4 you will use this equation and apply it on each element then we will uh, add local stiffness matrices to form global stiffness matrix so now uh, we will start example 4.1 uh, and use the previous expression in this example so uh, the statement is and using a direct stiffness matrix solves the problem of the propped cantilever beam subjected to and load b in figure the beam is assumed to have constant ei and length is equal to 2l it is supported by a roller in at mid length and is built in the right end so this in this diagram you can see it has three nodes this beam has three nodes and two elements this is element one and this is element two for element one nodes are one and two for element two nodes are two and three so we will use this formula for k matrix and we will write the k matrix for each element for element 1 and element 2 after writing uh, the k matrices for element 1 and element 2 you will add these two matrices to form the global stiffness matrix you know the procedure of uh, adding two local stiffness matrices into a single one 
so i don't uh, i think i don't need to repeat that how to add two local matrices into a single global matrix after that we will apply uh, we will use the equation 4.1.13 and uh, on the left side this these are the forces in the center it is k matrix and then on the right side it is displacement matrix after this step we will apply the boundary conditions what are the boundary conditions you need to see the figure again you can see that node 3 is fixed that means it cannot move in the vertical direction or it cannot rotate so v3 and phi3 is 0 add node 2 you can see node you cannot uh, beam cannot move in the vertical direction but it can rotate about point 2 so at uh, point 2 v2 is 0 so these are the boundary conditions you can see here v2 is equal to 0 v3 is equal to 0 and phi 3 is equal to 0 that means this term is 0 this is 0 and this is 0 so we will uh, 